What's good, Josh? Boy, Ross back at it again with another video. So we're gonna check out nine wrestling moves that shorten a WWE wrestler's career. Now, we all know that wrestling, you know, can take a, a turn for the worse, especially when you're in that squared circle. Sometimes you end up doing something, and you know, it's obviously not intentional, but you may have been. In May up getting a serious injury that can alter your career or shorten your career. Uh, we all know the infamous uh, Mick Foley mankind falling off the, the top of the hell in a cell. That definitely shortened his career. I don't care what nobody says. Taking those type of bumps and falls will definitely shorten your career with injuries. So we're going to check this out, man. Uh, appreciate all the love and support you guys have been showing on the channel. Let's get right into this thing. Certain moves that are rather dangerous to perform. These moves are known to cut careers short, and it's Perhaps. not uncommon for wrestlers to abandon that move and introduce a brand new, safer move into their arsenal. That's worth noting that there's no such thing as a completely safe move, as the nature of pro wrestling means that anything can go wrong at any uh -huh. time. Nevertheless, the preceding moves on this list have been confirmed by several iconic wrestlers to have shortened their career. Join us now as WrestleMania looks at nine wrestling moves that have shortened careers. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling Scratch videos. Subscribe to WrestleMania if you Facebook haven't already. For exclusive lists. Also check out WrestleMania.co.uk and our wrestling channel, Incredible. Number 9. The German Suplex The mm. German Suplex has been a popular move in all the major promotions for decades mm -hmm. and it looks absolutely brutal to take. In recent years, the move has been used by Brock Lesnar and Lesnar throwing his opponents with so much ferocity that it looks like his opponent is going to break their neck. Yeah. WWE Hall of Famer Mick Foley has called for the move to be outright banned. Mm. Foley during an episode of Foley's pod said the move is dangerous and takes years off a wrestler's career. Damn. Foley stated, I just don't like German suplexes. I think that over time they shorten careers and they destroy the quality of life so people can attack me for that. One, you know there's little margin for error. It's more margin for error on a German suplex, but it's just over time, it's going to wear you out. Mm -hmm. You can show the match that Daniel Garcia had with Willi Jutta to any reasonable orthopedic guy who would say that what those guys were doing was not going to lend itself to a poor quality of life. Number 8. The Original I understand that. I, I, I definitely do understand that. Those German suplexes, they just look brutal. Landing on your neck and head region, it, you know, obviously... You know, it, that's one of those type of things where it cannot be good for your body. So I get it. It is, you know, seen in pretty much every wrestling company. And maybe Mick Foley does have a point with that. So let me know down below. Do y'all think German suplexes should be banned? 619. Now the 619 is one of the most iconic and established finishing moves of all time. And it's drastically evolved over the years. Mm -hmm. When Rey Mysterio first did the move, he would perform the trademark kick, then follow it up with the signature West Coast pop. Yeah. Now the issue here was that it wreaked havoc on Mysterio's knees, so much so that Mysterio had to amend how he did the 619. Mysterio amended the move to include a frog splash or leg drop, and this meant that Mysterio could avoid extensive damage on his knees, which oh. ultimately has prolonged his career. Number 7. Didn't know that, the man. Tombstone Pile Driver. Now, the Undertaker is one of the most tenured celebrated wrestlers of all time, and his finishing move, the Tombstone Pile Driver, is synonymous with the dead man. Whilst the move itself is rather safe thanks to The Undertaker avoiding dropping his opponent on their head, yeah. it has had a major impact on The Undertaker's health and well-being. Oh. The Undertaker performed the move for over 30 years and this has gradually impacted The Undertaker's knees. Yeah. So much so that in 2021, Taker revealed that he needs his entire right knee replaced. Damn. Number six, Sheesh! I mean, it makes sense. You're doing that for over 20 years coming down straight onto your knees after a while yeah it, you know it, it probably does have to get replaced and fixed and omega when the hardy boys first debuted in wwe they would use a move known as event omega as their finishing move this would see matt perform a leg drop from the top rope whilst jeff was performing a splash from another corner matt would then proceed to use a leg drop as a finishing move whenever he was a singles wrestler alongside the twist of fate uh -huh. the move whilst exciting caused a ton of issues for matt and he would casually reduce how often he was using the move as it happens to be one of the most dangerous moves there is According to Matt, the problems truly began at Unforgiven 2005. 
Matt was wrestling a steel cage match against Edge, and the finish of the match saw Matt ascend to the top of the cage and oh, pull the yeah. leg from the top of the show. One of the most craziest feuds ever in WWE, and definitely one of the most craziest matches. This match was so fucking good, bro. This match was great. That leg drop from the top of the cell was fantastic. The structure. Bro. This high impact move well, damaged Matt's body match. so much that his lower back and his pelvis began to fuse together completely. Oh! We're extremely lucky that Matt still wrestles on a regular basis, and it was a smart move on behalf of the former US champion to reduce how often he delivers the move. Wow. Number five. His stems, bro, they're saying his. It was about to fuse together from. Oh, wow. That's. Insane. The Rack Attack. A WWE Hall of Famer, Nikki Bella, was forced to take a step back from the wrestling world of WWE in 2015 when it was revealed that Nikki had suffered significant damage to her neck. Nikki had herniated discs in her C6 and C7, wow. and it was believed that she was never going to wrestle again. The reason for Nikki's neck injury was because of her finishing move, The Rack Attack. According to Nikki, when the doctors were examining her, they were speechless that she was doing a move such as the rack attack five nights a week, and Damn. this ultimately caused the extensive damage on her neck. Thankfully for Nikki, wow. she was able to return to WWE, making sporadic appearances over the next few years. Nikki would also make it a mission to find a new finishing move, and this would lead to Nikki introducing the forearm smash, which has been her primary finisher since recovering from her neck issues. Didn't know that, man. Hey. I may not be the biggest fan of the Bellas, but I can I can at least respect what, you know, them at least being out there trying to put on a, a good show in the ring and, and willing to put their body on the line to entertain people. I can I can only respect that. Number four, the 054. And the 054 is one of the most impressive top moves in all of WWE. Oh, that move but is over cold. recent years, Mustafa Ali has completely removed the move from his arsenal, instead opting to use the standard 450 splash as his finishing move. Ali would answer a fan question on Twitter in relation to why he stopped doing the move, and this is when Ali revealed that the risk isn't worth the reward. Right. If you examine the move, it does seem to heavily impact Ali's knees, and this is likely what the WWE star is referencing. It's a good thing hey. that Ali has realized early on in his WWE career that the 054 was going to cause him long-term damage. Hey, the move is sick, but if it's at the cost of your health, I'm all for you abandoning it. This may have prevented the talented aerial athlete from having further issues down the line. Which is smart. Number three, the spiral tap. AJ Styles has some iconic moves that have become synonymous with the Phenomenal One's legendary career. From the Styles Clash to the Phenomenal Forum, these moves continue to be used as a finishing move by the former WWE Champion. However, AJ's Spiral Tap move, which used to be a common feature in all of AJ's matches, has been semi-retired in recent years. Naturally, as AJ has been getting older, the ability to perform the moves such sick. as a spiral tap has become a lot harder. Sick. According to AJ during a Twitch stream, if he attempted a move such as a spiral tap, in all likelihood he would injure himself trying it. It's evident that AJ is fully aware of his... Hey, I ain't gonna hold you. That move is sick. Uh, that move is fucking cool as hell. That shit look cool, and it look like it hurt for the person... Getting hit with that move. Limitations. Removing high risk moves such as a spiral <laughs> tap from his arsenal have resulted in AJ having a prolonged career and he continues to feature as one of the major players on WWE programming. Number two, the diving headbutt. Oh, a number yeah. of high profile wrestlers have used the diving headbutt uh -huh. during their careers. From Harley Race and Chris Benoit to the yeah. Dynamite Kid and Brian Danielson, all of these aforementioned talents had great difficulty with neck and concussion related issues and it's been heavily put down to the diving head but being a major factor in their established injuries. Oh in relation gosh. to Race, who is widely regarded as the creator of the move, he's admitted that he cites the diving headbutt as one of the reasons for his retirement. In fact, during his final few matches, Race stopped doing the aerial move altogether as he knew that's what was causing his immense pain. Damn. According to WWE Hall of Famer Kurt Angle, the move has sort of a whiplash effect, which seriously impacts the body. Oh my god. We will discuss this while analyzing Benoit's use of the move on an episode of The Kurt Angle Show and stated, Does the move even need to exist knowing what we now know in relation to just how many problems it's caused? The risks certainly outweigh the benefits of the move, and it's time that the major promotions look to ban the move indefinitely. You know what? I'm all in for it. You know, the diving head, but yeah, you can do without. Just like the chair shots, the unprotected chair shots, you can do without with those. You know, it's just, I'm all for a wrestler being able to enjoy their lives after they're done with wrestling. And number one, Hulk Hogan's leg drop. 
During his legendary career, Hulk Hogan used the leg drop of Doom as his finishing move. Mm -hmm. Whilst on paper, the move just looks like a basic wrestling move that could be found in any standard wrestling match. Yeah. In reality, the move is responsible for causing years of wear and tear on Hogan's body. Damn. According to Hogan, if he could change anything about his life, he would have picked a different move as his finisher. Wow. Besides the iconic leg drop as the primary reason for his number of back surgeries. Hogan would discuss this topic in depth during an interview on the Los Angeles Times as Hogan added, Everyone says they wouldn't change anything about their life. If I could change anything, it would be my finisher. I would never use the leg drop. I'd use the sleeper. All the back surgeries I've had are because of that damn leg drop. Damn. And Scoliosis brother, dropping that leg for 35 years did me in. I damn. said I had the largest arms in the world and I should have used a sleeper hold or another finisher with my arms. But they have it folks. Damn. Nine WWE wrestling wow. The leg drop has caused him so much pain. That's that's insanity. I ain't gonna lie to you. Like the leg drop doesn't look that devastating, but when you think about it, he's jumping up pretty high. And he's coming down, he's just landing. You know what I'm saying? And that's probably messing up his spine doing that for 35 years. That's that's insane bro that's crazy man this is why i always say i give respect to the wrestlers out there for what you guys do you guys are truly amazing when it comes to just willingly putting your bodies on the line to entertain us thank y'all so much uh to all the wrestlers out there whether it's on the independent scene or you're in aew wwe new japan wherever you at thank you for just being willing being willing or willingly being able to go out there perform for us and knowing the risk that you know you could injure yourself for you know or permanently injure yourself and still willing uh willing to do that for us to entertain us is such an amazing moment uh we just such, such an amazing thing but comment down below let me know man which one of these i guess you could say moves uh surprise you the most um uh, when it pertains to a particular wrestler uh, shortening their careers or dealing with injuries. The leg drop surprised me the most. I did not know Hulk Hogan was really suffering through a lot of pain and stuff like that just from a, a leg drop he had been dropping for 30 plus years. So, but I appreciate all the love and support. Row 2, 100K, appreciate y'all kicking with me. See you on the next one.